in Cognos, it is possible to change formatting of data. That means that we can uh, change decimal delimiter, number of decimal places, separator in dates, and so on. And in order to achieve something like that, first we have to select some column, and then we go here to uh, data format property. We will open a new dialog, and here we will uh, select this data type date, because we have a date column, and here we can change separator. I will choose slash, I will click on OK, and we will now see that our separator for dates is now slash. I will go back to our uh, data format dialog. Here in this uh, menu on the left side, we can see that we have different uh, data types. Uh, for example, text has uh, these properties, but this custom also has the same properties, so they are the same. And we have time, date, time, and time interval, they are not so often uh, used. So we will focus on text number, currency, percent, and date uh, data type. Now, in order to uh, remove some uh, custom formatting, we will select this option default. So when I click on OK, uh, we will notice that now our custom formatting is gone. Now, we saw that we have many properties. I will now jump to this Excel file. And here we can see our properties for dates, for text, for percent, currency, and number. And uh, I can see that these yellow properties, they are uh, mentioned three times. So there are duplicates for these properties. I can also say that for percents, we have these two unique properties, and then we have all of the other properties from number. And same is for currency. There are only four unique uh, properties, and then all of other properties are the same as for number. Now, I made here a list of all the unique properties, and we will explain all of them except these properties that are uh, labeled with uh, these three dots because I couldn't figure out how to uh, use uh, those properties. We will now go back. Uh, we will now go to one other report to see examples uh, for our da data format. Uh, first, we will see property missing value characters. If we select this column and then if we go here to uh, data format, we, we will see that in that property we can type anything we want. And if our column has some cells with nulls, then those nulls will be replaced uh, with those uh, symbols that we have just uh, saw. Then we have a date style. We have four uh, date styles. We have short, medium, long, and full. And if we go here to uh, data format, uh, we will see here that actually we have those options here. So all the headers for this uh, list are showing us what uh, option do we have. And we can see here how our short uh, date looks like medium, uh, long, or uh, full. Then we have a date separator. It could be slash, dash, or dot. We have date ordering. So our date could be organized as year, month, day, or month, day, year, or a day, month, year. We can decide to display errors. And that means that we will have these letters uh, AD uh, for Anna Domini. Then we can decide whether to display years. We can decide not to display years, to display them, to hide centuries. So instead of 2023, we will only have 23, or to show century, so we would have uh, 2023. Then we have decided whether to display months. We can decide not to display them, to display them, to display them with one digit, to display month uh, with two digits, to use a short name of a month, or long name of a month. Then we can decide to display a weekday. We can decide first to say no, to say yes, to use a short name for Saturday or to use a long name for Saturday. Then we can decide whether to display days. Uh, we can decide not to display them, to display them, to display them with one digit. This three is one digit. T to use two digits, so we have zero, three, or to use presentation that is reserved for a Julian calendar. Then we can uh, decide between number of decimal places. And this uh, here we can um, choose numbers from 0 to 10. And if our original number is 100.12345, then if we use 0, we won't have any decimal places. This is what we would get for two decimal places. And this is what we would get for 10 decimal places. And as we can see, our decimals uh, will be padded uh, with zeros. Then we have decimal separator. It could be a dot, a comma, or a dollar. Then we have a scale. 
uh, scale means that we are uh, presenting our original number. This is our original number in, for example, thousands. This here is dot, and three means that we are actually using uh, 10 uh, powered to uh, 3, and uh, that means that we are dividing our number with thousands, and this would mean then that we are dividing our number with uh, 10 power to 6, that is millions. So th these are millions, and this would be then uh, billions, or we can use hundreds. Then we can uh, decide on a negative sign symbol, we can use minus, bracket, or some of these icons. Then we should decide on position of negative sign, it could be at the beginning, like these three examples, or at the end, like in these three examples. Then we can decide whether to use thousand separator, to not use it, or to use it, which is default. Then we can decide on uh, what thousand separators to use, should we use comma, space, uh, dot, or single quote. Then we have to decide on group size. Uh, usually we group numbers in uh, thousands, but we can uh, group them uh, in uh, hundreds. So in groups that have two digits, that have three digits, which is default, or that have four digits. And then we have secondary group size. Uh, in secondary group size, at the end, we always have 789, 789, 789. That is because our primary group size is defined as three in this example. But uh, in front of it, we could have a uh, secondary group size as a measure for grouping and we can group our values in two digits in three digits which is default or in four digits uh, and we will see the rest of our properties in the next video